you put this out for bid every year? No. I'm going to go first. I'm sorry. Candace, Candace, go ahead. Uh, no, sir, we don't. And Ms. Neal can elaborate a little bit. We have had trouble even finding somebody to provide these services to, to start with. So, so I guess that's leading to my next question. So it's not nobody local that would be interested in No, sir. In doing it. There's not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Trostclair. Thanks, Ms. Malden. <clears throat> Item number three. It, well, it looks like we have two speaker cards here in regards to that. Um, Mr. Kirby Bonvalin. Um, well, let me read the resolution first and then we'll get into that. Item number three, resolution awarding the request for proposal receiving for the transportation of solid waste garbage to landfill to Pelican Waste and Debris LLC and authorizing the parish president and or his designee to execute all contract documents associated herewith. Um, in regards to item number three, we have two speaker cards. Mr. Kirby Bonvalin, can you come to the mic and state your name and address? Kirby Bonvalin, 600 Roussel Street, home of Louisiana. And I can go on to speak, right? Yes, sir. All right, just like we took that Pledge of Allegiance, I think that's very important in America that we all have fairness and equal treatment for all people. Uh, we're here because we've been servicing the parish for the last 25, almost 25 years with hauling solid waste transportation from the Turbulent Parish Transfer Station to River Birch. In the process, we have done, I think, a very good job. We have not had any problems working with the administration from change to change, from year to year or whatever. Whoever's been in office, we've been able to adapt and work with them and do the job and do it right. Uh, and we've been doing it for a really good fair cost to the parish government. There was an RFP that was issued and we responded to that RFP. We filled out everything that was requested of us. Also, it's my understanding that we bid $15.89 per cubic, I mean, per cubic ton to go to River Birch for transportation. There was an item in there for contract labor. We put zero because we don't want to charge the parish any additional fees for contract labor. And we also had a price in there for debris hauling, which was $4.25 is our bid. What I'm here to find out is where is the bids of Pelican? Because we don't have any idea what their bid was. And I'm here to try to find out why they are getting this contract without us having any information about where we stacked up with the bid, where was the process, how did they come up with this as a recommendation. So that's what I'm here to find out. What can we do or how can we figure out if this was done in all fairness to us? Because we feel like we don't think it was at that point, at this point. So that's what we're here for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bovalan. Um, Mr. Harding, you have a light? Mr. Bovalan. Mr. Bo yes, sir. Uh, I'm I'm actually privy to some information here. Um, there's a process where you bid zero, and you just mentioned something that you didn't charge or you didn't put, place this into in the bid. No, the zero was in the bid. Zero is our number for contract labor. We're not going to charge the parish anything for that. Zero is our number, and we put zero in the bid. Okay, zero is the bid. So that's our number for contract labor. Uh, if you had to charge a dollar, how much would that equal up to in, in, in about a year? Well, it would be fifty for $56 a week times two is what the number would have been. And you would multiply that times 52 weeks. I don't know what the number would be, but it would be, you know, very little. Very little. But still in all, you're saving, right? Yes. And uh, I just, uh, because we have some information up here, and because you come up here in that fashion, uh, I just want to bring that point out because there are some numbers I see up here you probably don't see. So That is correct. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Harding. Thanks, Mr. Bovalin. Um, We have a Jacob Young. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Jacob Young with the law firm of Shahardi Sherman Williams. My address is One Galleria Boulevard, Suite 1100. Metairie, Louisiana. I'm here today because I represent WB Company, and I'm not going to speak about the business of trash removal because of my client who preceded me. 
uh, knows much about that. They've been doing it for the parish for 24 years, my understanding here. But I do want to talk about the RFP and the criteria for the RFP. And the reason why I want to do that is because I look at page 16 of the RFP that was submitted by the parish. It has, it states its own criteria, which is a parish is allowed to do in these in circumstances is to state their own criteria for the, the proposals they'd like to seek. And we have 50% weighted towards cost. We have 25% relevant experience and capabilities. And we have 25% technical approach. And the reason why I'm speaking today is because it's my understanding that WB com Company submitted a proposal that had the lowest cost, which is 50%. They've been doing this job for the parish for 24 years. I'm not aware of anyone else doing this job for the parish for the last 24 years. And I'm not aware of any concerns with their technical approach. And the public bid law in the, in the state of Louisiana is in Title 38. And 2212 of that section indicates that when the criteria is met, by a lowest bidder, then the parish is compelled to accept that bid. I ha I'm not aware of any rejection grounds under Title 38, 2214, but I am aware that it, that of the experience and the cost that I outlined to the committee, so to the council. So my suggestion is that it's appropriate that WB be awarded the contract um, that's contrary to the resolution as I read it. Um, I don't mean to <laughs> come and <laughs> tell the, the council members how to conduct trash removal in their parish. I can only speak to the experience and the quality of my clients work over the years. And they submitted a fair proposal. They submitted a more than fair proposal and they submitted it perhaps beyond the terms of fairness when they put zero for contract labor on each one of these categories is my understanding is this lowest bid and i field any questions from the council and i thank you for your time i thank you for hearing me today thank you mr young i don't think we have any questions <clears throat> in regards to our mr noli rep yes sir thank you we have a uh, mr clay knockan here our solid waste director who was a part of this uh, this bid process. I'd like to call him up to shed some light on that process uh, for the council. Absolutely, Sanaka. Clay Nakan, Solid Waste Director, uh, Terrebonne Parish. Um, in your backup, uh, you're having it where. Um, a score sheet and a uh, the notes of uh, myself and Miss uh, Celestine for uh, the way we scored the RFP. Um, let me get my paperwork here. Yes, On um. April 8th, uh, we had our non-mandatory uh, meeting where uh, Mr. Kirby Bonvland and Mr. Grant Bonvland uh, attended the meeting. Uh, they asked about that specific thing about uh, putting the contract labor into the, uh, the price of the tons, and we told them, no, that's not the way we wanted it. We want a price of the, uh, ton of, uh, the contract laborers because they work at the yard and we need to see them there. So we wanted a to be able to fairly um, sc score the thing, we needed a price on it, uh, not combined into the price of the tonnage. So on um, when we got the bids, me and Celestine met, and um, the uh, scores, we seen where they did not put one, so uh, we discussed it, and uh, we came up where we broke this uh, the 50 points uh, into... Um, uh, the, being able to give the highest point of uh, six sixteen point six seven percent, and um, we scored them that way. And if you see on your score sheets A, B, and C, um, and that's how we came up with the uh, points. 
and uh, Pelican uh, Waste and Debris came out with 86.67, WB with 76, and Norris and Boudreaux with 41.33%. Uh, and, and going through the, uh, con the RFPs, we felt that um, the technical approach from both Pelican and WB uh, met the criteria. Uh, Norris and Boudreau, uh, by just looking at the RFP and not looking at the, the, the company, um, we knew uh, Norris and Boudreau probably could do the work, but the RFP did not describe the work that they could do, so we, they were scored a zero. Um, and in the relevant experience, both of them, um, Pelican and their RFP went into the, uh, about them operating a transfer station uh, in the past. Uh, uh, and knowing the uh, garbage uh, business, uh, they also scored a 25. And of course, uh, WB, knowing uh, us, uh, their RFP and everything, they scored a 25. And again, when it came down to Norris and Boudreaux, they probably could do it, but they didn't put it in their RFP. So by looking at the RFP, not looking at um, the, uh, the work uh, that we know that people can do, but the RFP, this was, um, they got a, a zero on that. So that's how we came up with these scores. It was RFP put out. Um, and... Um, you know, uh, the other thing that came was a, uh, this is, uh, we needed to do an RFP in order to have a competitive bid for FEMA. If uh, we have a disaster and we need to activate and use these prices for FEMA, it has to be uh, competitively RFP out. So that's uh, where we got this. Mr. John Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So Mr. Nakan. Because they, on item B, put zero, does that declare them non-responsive to the specifications that were put out in the RFP? Correct. We, in order to, to grade the rest of the the rest of them, we uh, we gave them a zero because there was no uh, dollar figure in there for us. Uh, so that we can compare them to the other companies. So they didn't meet the requirements that were put out when the RFP went out? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Amadi. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Harding. Zero and nothing. Uh, was it no dollar charge or no charge uh, zero, just NA, non-applicable. They're charging zero, or they just didn't put anything at all? They put, they wrote in that the contract labor, they put in that the contract labor would be charged in the uh, tonnage would come through the tonnage of uh, the transfer station. And that tonnage would be reflected where? In this particular application, RFP? The, the first uh, line and the uh, score. Oh, so that, they're even with that, 25, 25? Is that yeah, one right there? No, that's, uh, they, um, they actually got a, um, a 13 on that, on the, uh, on the, that. They got a 13 on that one? Right. Okay. Oh, okay. They got a 13, and what did Pelican get? A 10. A 10? And Norris and Boudreaux got? An 8. An 8? Okay. I'm sorry, 16.67. They 16. had the best. 16.67? I'm sorry, they had the best uh, uh, lowest rate. And, and the next one in line would be? That would be the? Um, WB? Uh, that, no, that's the next line. B is all the way across is the contract labor. Yeah, but I'm saying you got ten dollars, thirteen dollars, and sixteen dollars and sixty-seven cents. Hey, I'm not, I'm not for line B. Line, uh, actually, that's line A. Yeah, you need line B. Is what you're talking. About. No, uh, the, the 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 reflection of the cost that's diverted from the zero will be uh show will show up in the tonnage, right? So even with the tonnage. You're saying that the $10 that they have here, so actually it would be 
a three dollar difference if they're saying that's that's going to be reflected in there. But then you don't want it done that way because it got ten dollars, thirteen dollars, and sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents on a. I I I'm not following where you're going with this. I'm if well, I'm trying to find out how much are we saving, and how much does that zero shows up to the negative where they're supposed to be saving money. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I don't do this for a living. You know what I mean? I see a zero there, and I'm, I'm just, I can't figure it out. I think I'm like uh, Mr. Armady. I'm trying to figure out how the zero get here, but it's a, a specification that they have in the RFP. They have right. to put something. We, we wanted to see what the contract labor is going to cost us there because at any time, if we need to stop the contract labor or go down to one contract labor, we want to be able to uh, do it. It just depends. We we specify as we want two contract laborers in the in the RFP, but if something happens that we don't need to, we don't want to be charged for two. That's why we wanted a line item so that we could keep up with what was going on. And all this was explained to them in at the non-mandatory meeting that we wanted this broken out, and they chose not to. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Um, Mr. Clyde Hamner. Okay. I still don't really get it because the way I'm reading this is they're charging not uh, not a certain amount, not not yeah, they're charging zero for contract labor. That's their cost. Am I reading that, misreading it? I, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. That's, the way I'm that's, reading it, and they, they put in there that it's going to be in their tonnage. Uh, and where is that reflected? On their um, their uh, proposal sheet. Yeah, I see that. I see that statement. Okay. But that's not their statement. But. Their tonnage is what? Fifteen eighty nine. What the the five? Okay, that that bottom line is the tonnage. Um, the bottom line. I'm not it, following what. Uh, on one, I mean a. I'm just looking at the the. Can I say these numbers? Uh, yeah. Are these public? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at the, the 531.25. That's their bottom line cost, right? No. That that's that's, uh, that's a that's um, a for cubic uh, yards if we need them for a de uh, disaster. That's what it would cost uh, for um, 125 cubic yards. They're going to charge $4.25 per, uh, and that's for 125 cubic yards, 531.25. Can I ask Mr. Bonvalin to explain his numbers to us? Absolutely. Mr. Bonvalin? All right, I could give you the numbers verbatim. We bid for solid waste transportation, which is on an average about 120,000 metric tons a year. We bid $15.89, which would cost the parish government about $1,906,800, okay? Fifteen eighty nine is our per ton price. He asked for us to give a bid on contract labor, which was the second line item. We put zero because zero is our charge for contract labor. Won't cost the parish government anything for us to operate and do what we're doing down there every day. It's gonna cost you fifteen dollars and eighty nine cents a ton for us to do that job, which we're doing today. The other thing was on the solid waste. I mean the debris hauling. We put in a bid, like he said, four dollars and twenty five cents a cubic yard which is where you're getting that 500 plus, mm -hmm. 425 times to 125, gives you that total. In essence, though, the main thing you need to be concerned about is the tonnage rate because that's where you spend most of your money, expenditures. You're doing 120 to 130,000 cubic yards per year, and we've been hauling that for the last, you know, 20-some-odd years. 
Uh, we've been negotiating back and forth with Clay about five trucks. He got five trucks in this bid. We've been doing that work with five and six trucks without getting compensated for it for the last 20 some years, okay? We've been trying to negotiate and get that worked out, which we never could, all right? So what I'm saying here today is we've been doing the parish a really great service. We've been working for a lot less than what we should have been getting. And I really think it's important that we understand. We want to continue to do this, but we don't think it's fair to be, try to be, you know, to deny our RFP because we put a zero for contract label. That's just not fair. We responded. We were on time with everything. There was never a letter sent to us that we would disqualify. So I just think it's, you know, in our best interest to go give it to the low bidder. And I think we are the low bidder when you look at the numbers that you have there. I would assume that, but I don't have the other numbers, but I would be love for y'all to share all the numbers so we wouldn't know where everybody stands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonvalin. Uh, Mr. Hamner, are you okay? So uh, I was ex staff, they were the low bidder, uh, just not the high scorer. On the, uh, if you look at it. On the contract, yeah. They scored a, um, a 26 on out of out of it oh i'm sorry yeah they scored a 26 on the uh for when we scored it they scored a 26 using our scoring method and um pelican scored a 36.67 but as far as just a low bid if you use them not charging anything for labor, then yes, their their number was the lowest. And I'm going to ask one more time, why can they not charge for labor? <laughs> it's because we, again, the labor, we wanted that in there. They charge, uh, We put it in here because we wanted to do a fair evaluation. We didn't want it included in the tonnage. We wanted it included uh we wanted a separate number um and they did not give us a separate number okay you good mr hamner thank you all right mm -hmm. uh mr babin yes thank you it, you know uh, again we only asking these questions to ask these questions if they would have put a dollar right there, what would their score have been rather than zero? Uh, I mean, I understand. Yeah. Listen, I understand the RFP. You, you asked for specific things, and that's the way it should have been done. Right. But it was not. But alluding to what we're hearing right here, their overall bid is the lowest bid. They've been doing it for 24 years, okay? I'm just simply asking that if they would have included, if they, they their their unit was was uh, 1589 versus 1619, the other was 425 versus 440. Okay, so that tells me right there that they lower on both those items. If they would have put a dollar in right there, they would have still been lower. And right. I just want to know how that would have scored because then it would have filled something other than zero. Am I making sense? Right. And we would have been able to, if they had put a zero, we would have been able to have the, the workers there. This here, the way. No, no, not a zero. I'm saying yeah. if they had put a one, Clay, how would you have scored that then? I guess we'd have had to score them uh, with the, uh, because they gave us a, a, a dollar amount would have, they'd have you, been scored. You see, you see where yeah. I'm going with that? Okay. So the, the next question then I'm, I'm going to ask is. When do we have to have this in? Is this something? Is this something if this council decided to throw this out tonight and mm -hmm. let you rebid it? Okay, according to the specs. I mean, we threw out numbers here that everybody knows now, and maybe they'll get, maybe we'll get a better deal. Okay, mm -hmm. it would would it be a problem? And I'm only asking because I got more people that probably want to talk. Okay, would it be a problem if we delayed this process based on that? As long as I could start it immediately after, uh, re redo it. Yeah, but but you see where I'm going with this. Sheer numbers tell us that if they'd have bid a dollar, if they'd have put a dollar figure right there, 
just one dollar, then they would have still been lowest bidder, and your scoring method would have been different with a dollar right there. Right. Am I correct? Okay. Which means instead of 26 versus the 36, they, they, they might have had. Uh, uh, they they were they might have had a uh, they were only ten points down total. Okay, Correct. they may have been exceeded that number. Correct. Again, you see where I'm going with yep. this. I just I just want to clarify it for myself and and for everyone else yes, if sir. possible. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babin, uh, Mr. Champagne. I thought Mr. Waz was before me. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So I I, I guess. The I guess looking at this, they they were they put a zero, which to me is a dollar amount, is uh and they didn't get a score even though they're like on that line item, they were scored a zero, but they were the bet they were the lowest bid. And and that's how I see it in my mind. So that you know, so I I I don't know how the impact of having that dollar amount affects the operation of your facility, knowing that number, but I like zero for me is zero. I, I you know, like if they're saying they're not going to charge you for that, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I have a hard time understanding why that makes a difference in the operation of running the landfill. Yeah. So maybe you could explain that. If it's if it's zero and they have they 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 going to choose when they have the people there and everything else. If we have a dollar amount coming to us saying this is what it is, we know that these people are working and providing a service for us. The way the transfer station works, these two people <laughs> underneath the transfer station, and they are assigned to to us to spot the trucks and um, clean the bays. But they decide that. They're not, they're not going to provide a contract service. They're going to include it in there. Then they're working for them to be able to do the, um, to get in there and, uh, and, and could be working on their trucks. They could not be moving the trailers. They could be doing uh, any of the stuff, uh, you know, other than us having accountability for the worker. Good, Mr. Chapa. Yes. All righty. Um, I just have a question from the chair, Mr. Um, Clayton. Are they doing that now, the contract we're, labor? We are paying them a contract labor price uh, to uh, move the trailers. And that was something that they came to us and asked us for, that they needed one, and then the next time we negotiated, they needed two. So we added two, so we added two contract laborers, and we're paying them for two contract laborers. So you're paying them now. Correct. Going forward, you don't have to pay them. That's, that's what Based they Based on their... Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Voisin, Clayton? Sorry, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You did. Hey, Mr. Dawkins. <clears throat> so the contract labor, is that something that they just provide, or is that something you may request from time to time for we, contract labor? We we require a contract labor. They asked for two, so we start. We started now. We require two contract labors with a timesheet of what work they uh, and they only work for us moving the trailers and uh, cleaning the bays. They don't clean. They don't work on the tires. They don't work on the trucks. All they do is spot the trucks and clean the bays. Are there any times where you may? Uh, you know, the parish may request more contract labor. Is there ever a time that that can or has happened? Not in, not for this contract. Not for that particular contract. Uh, I'd be curious on uh, legal's thoughts she, she, she's on coming. this issue. So I'm going I'm to send it to legal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Voisin. Um, Mr. Amadi. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think y'all looking at numbers, y'all not looking at contracts. The way public bids are done, because I deal with them every day on my job, I think, you know, and I'd love to see the bomb blast continue doing this, but I think where they messed up is they amended their thing with that number one saying they're gonna do it. And this is my question for legal. Because they deviated from the specifications by saying they were going to do it this way, 
If I did that on my bids, I'd be labeled non-responsive and my bid would be kicked out. So legal, does that make them non-responsive? So I want, I know a lot of people are, are throwing around the word bid, but I want to point out that this was an RFP and not a bid. So bids are based solely on price, but you'll see in the RFP that this has some other factors in it. Um, so absolutely, if it was a bid, it would be considered non-responsive. Um, the rules are a little different with an RFP. I haven't, the first time I saw this was this morning. I haven't had time to dip into this. I, I wasn't called or anything about it. Um, I would like to, and if, if Clay has some time uh, that you can spare to allow me to look into this, to, to check the regulations, to check statutory language, to go over everything with you, I'd like the opportunity to maybe put, put my thoughts into this and put it down in writing to give you some advice on what you should do with it. Thank you, ma'am. So with that, and I know Mr. Leeright wants to talk, but I'll go ahead and make a substitute motion to hold this over until we get a response from legal. And I'll second that. We have a motion by Mr. Well, from the chair first, if I may. Um, we have a deadline. When, when does this contract mature? July 31st? Correct. Okay. Now, is there anything as far as requirements where whomever is awarded this contract has to provide more trucks, more whatever, or, you know, because this, if we delay it, that's just going to eat into that too as well. And contractually, it's the third. It requires 13 brand new trailers and uh, it can have uh, five and it requires five uh, tractors, but uh, it can be uh, used as long as they uh, meet the uh, Louisiana DOT inspection. Okay. Um, I have a few things. I don't... Um, the motion before we, um, well, that's going to just, uh, yeah, I'd like to finish discussion on so that. There was no motion prior to that, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. There was no, so this is, we don't have to vote immediately. Right, okay, on this right. Because there was no prior motion. Okay. Um, I have a few things from the chair that I'd like to, that I've noticed. Um... First, in our backup, everyone else is not privy to it, but we are up here. Also, you guys are there. Um, administration, I mean, we have an email sent out by you, Clay, on Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024 at 2.38 p.m. I'm sure everybody sees that one. Now, we're talking legal. If we jump down into the body of that email, and it was addressed to Mr. Noah Lerat. It was sent on April 2nd, 2024, but the email's body, first line of the email states, on Tuesday morning, April 8th, 2024, a meeting with our staff at the purchasing office to review and score the solid waste transportation RFP. Am I the only one who sees see that or? We got an issue. I have a very big issue with that for one, since we're talking legal. An oversight, very big oversight, and we're going to have some contention here about this anyway, legal. That's the first thing, okay? Secondly, we have um, – well, if it was a typo, Mr. Amadee, I mean, a two is on one side of the keyboard and an eight is on the other side. Um, specifically – we're looking at the cost. We're talking numbers and everybody's kind of confused. Let's put it in the context. And I look at it at, as the life of the contract itself. We have two contract workers that we're talking about. So in other words, we're going to cost the parish $370,944 more if we go, if we agree to the recommendation. That's what I see. That's over a three year period. $370,000 more, all right? So with that being said, zero is considered a numerical factor. 
no matter how you look at it. It's a part of the numerical system. And not only that, have we ever had any issues documented? Since we're talking legal terms, we got to make sure that we're covering ourselves. And not only that, I think I should mention, um, in the spirit of our parish president, we're taking, uh, trying to take, uh, or following your lead in a sense of transparency and also cost saving and being cost effective. So with that, this would be actually a cost savings for us to, you know, use zero. I mean, I, and I understand that you have to have those numbers, but at the same time, that's on them if, they, if we have an issue for pro providing that contractually. Meaning, storm happens or something like that, and we need contract workers. If we need them around the clock for 365 days after an event, that's what they agreed to. That's my way of looking at that. And like a lot of the other council members mentioned um, about being kind of kind of being confused in the fact it's it's not really confusing at all because the reason they scored zero in that category was because they put zero. But that category, if you guys look at it, it says cost for A, B, and C. Transportation services is A, B is contractor labor, and C is the local declared disaster recovery dollar amount. They have, and I can't see where they didn't adhere to the requirements of the RFP. We're saving, it's $1,288 a week per contract worker. We double that because we have two. And again, over a two-year, over a, a three-year period, that's $370,000 that we're going to be spending if we agree to where we're at with the current recommendation. That being said, Mr. Nolly Rep. Thank you, sir. I was going to refer you to that backup material, uh, page 67, for clarification on uh, Mr. Nakan and Ms. Ellis's scoring method for technical, relevant, experience, and cost approach that you referenced. Sorry, say that one more time. I was going to refer the council to backup page 67. That email you referred to yes. for the scoring committee's review notes on technical approach, relevant experience, and cost. Just well, to provide clarity on Mr. Nakan's testimony on that. That's it. Okay, as relates to cost, I'm assuming what you're talking about? The summary of how they went about scoring that? That's yes, the summary clearly. Of it. Yeah. Yes, clearly. Yeah. And, and that answers what specifically? If there's any questions on Mr. Nakan's testimony on how he scored, him and Ms. Ellis scored the RFPs. It's clearly written how he how they went about that method in that, that email that you referred to. Correct. And that's what we're all up here and we're confused about right. because they put a zero. They asked at the meeting, if I'm, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but they requested at the meeting that we consider, could we consider combining the contract labor and the price per ton. Mr. Nakan said no. However, it doesn't even matter because their cost was zero, which is a numerical factor. So that, that, that's really a, a moot point mm -hmm. because what he's explaining there and what they did is exactly what it is. Give us a number of what it's going to cost to provide contract labor. They said, we've been doing all this work for the parish. We feel that we can handle it. Mm -hmm. We can eat that cost. They put zero. You can't penalize an, uh, an entity for helping us save money or wanting us to save money. I would suggest 
that. I wouldn't want to. So with that being said, Mr. Babin. I, I, no, I think my my question was answered mm -hmm. in, in a roundabout way. I, I just I, I think we need to defer to legal on this, in my opinion, to let them come up. I happen to agree with what you say in that you know zero is a numerical number, okay? And, and if they felt like they could do it that way, it did not meet the requirements of the RFP. And so we we have a legal uh, dilemma here. Is there a typo in the thing? Yeah, there's, there's a typo on the date. There's a lot of probably typos in, in all of this. I'm not as stickler for that as much as the fact that I don't quite, I can't quite understand. And again, it's not something that I deal with on a daily basis, how they're willing to accept the fact that they will not charge this parish for that particular thing and in the same time get penalized for it. Okay, so again, I, I seconded the motion with uh, Mr. Hamid. They put that that we hold this over, get a legal opinion on it, and hopefully we can have this back up within two weeks. All right, now, what would happen if we have to go back? If we have to throw this all out and go back to an RFP, how long will that take, Clay? Do you? The, the thirty day uh, notice uh, out there, and then uh, as soon as it come back in. Uh, so, so this all depends on the falling of the council meeting. Okay. So uh, again, if if we delay this tonight, as soon as we can bring this back up to get legal's opinion on this, two is two weeks from now. All mm -hmm. right. So if at that point, I'm just trying to figure things out procedurally here. We throw it out. At that point, you got 30 days to have to put it back out again. So then we're at the end of May. Then okay and get it back to us we in the second week in june does that still give you time I, that's cutting it close I, i'm just i'm trying to logically figure out where we going here okay i don't know i never bought trailers so i don't know what's the lead time on trailers but that was one of the reasons we put the uh the five use tractors because they uh that that is usually the most lead time okay but but again Somebody looking at a contract of this magnitude has probably done their homework already and know what they're going to do, anticipating that they were going to get the bid on. Okay. Right. This is not something that they're storing from scratch is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Okay. But, but again, because there seem to be some legalities here and, and Ms. Neal would like to look into it, I, 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 I would vote to, to delay this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Babin. Mr. Harding? I don't think um, that we'll be in a position that we be looking at trying to put out another RFP. And the deal there would be is the fact that one little thing, zero, nada, zilch, does not apply. So, you know what I mean? It would be unfair, I guess, what's about to come up and what is assumed to give other opportunities to send out another RFP. And we just stuck on what is zero amount compared to $1 or compared to $16 or $10. That's, that's, that seemed to be the thing. You know what I mean? If that would not be, if they were, if they were actually, they had the dollar figure there, if they had a dollar and, and, and somebody else had 50 cents, and they got beat out by the 50%, these people are saying, that's fair. But then for them to say that they are not going to charge, they're going to eat, these people are saying, you know what they're saying? We want to work. We need the work, not necessarily need, but then they've been, we've been doing the work. That's, that's what it is. Small business, mom and pop, going down the road, that's, that's all it is. I'm, I'm looking at you, Clay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you know, I'm just I'm just making my point. You know what I mean? I think if you really want to get at it, we get the legal. And if legal says we're not gonna charge you anything in this spot right here, and zero is legitimate, 
That's the issue where I'm at right now. That's where I look at. That's where I'm at. Zero is zero. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Truskler. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look, this is relatively simple. You either, you either want to vote for it or you want to go. Seems like the consensus of the council is we want to hold it over. If you vote, if you vote this down, it automatically has to go for, for another RFQ. Uh, we don't need substitute motion. We just vote. If, if you don't want it, if you want it, if you want to go with it as is, you vote for it. If you want to vote, if you want more information, which I think we, we do, I'm in favor of that. I think it's a consensus of the council. Uh, wait on legal. And at that point, if it's voted down, it's dead. We can't change the, the award tonight anyway. We can't change the award here tonight. So it's going to have to either vote it up or vote it down. If you vote it down, then it's going to have to go through the process again regardless. That's, that's just the way it's set up. So a vote tonight is either going to be awarded to Pelican or we don't need a substitute. We, if you vote it down, you don't need a substitute. And then it, it's, it's dead. After we vote it down, it's dead. It's out. And then Clay's got to start his process over, or the, the parish does, administration. So, you know, my recommendation is, is, is it, you know, I'm in favor of waiting for legal's advice. You know, I, I, I understand somewhat how RFPs work. You know, I don't deal with them every day. Most of us don't. Uh, I also have a good idea how contracts go. And I also have a good idea when nothing means nothing, you know. I understand really good. But at the end of the day, a simple, the simple thing tonight is either you voted for it if you, want, if you want to go with it as it is, or you vote against it. And if you vote against it, it, it's out. It's done. And then administration starts the process over. And, and that's where we at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charles Clare. You got, you got, Mr. Babin. Yeah, point well taken, Steve, but but I, I believe if we delay it tonight based on legal giving us an opinion, I don't think we throw in the thing out where we have to start the process over again, okay? Uh, that's that's my unlegal legal opinion. Uh, we, we're not, we didn't make a motion to accept this. We made it a motion to hold this over for legal to review it. So we're not throwing the process out. We, we're not throwing, we're not saying that Pelican has it or WB has it or no one ha we, we're asking for a legal opinion based on something that was put in here that we need an answer on. So I, I don't think that we're, we're automatically starting the RFP again. That's why I mentioned it earlier. I tried to throw a timeline out there just to see what it would take. But again, the motion is to delay what we have in front of us to get a legal opinion, not to vote it up or down. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Babin, Mr. Trosclair. Okay, Mr. Babin, if if we just delay it and then we come back in two weeks and then it fails, then we delayed the whole process over two weeks right. even further. Right. If we start it tonight, then we two weeks ahead, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trosclair. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Babin. All right. And and but again. If we get the legal opinion in two weeks, the process moves on from there, okay? So it's a 50-50. We don't know what legal is going to come up with. All I'm saying is we're not, we're not awarding and we're not cutting somebody out tonight. We're waiting for two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babin. Mr. John Amity. Thank you, and I realize it's my third time. Um, so to legal, how long do you think it would take for you to get this to us because if you got us an answer tomorrow or Wednesday during the day, we could technically do an add on on Wednesday night. Uh, I'm not my no mind. pressure. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I could try to drop everything and get it done for you. If you want to push it to get it done. I I'm don't like at, doing those types yeah, of things. In no, a rush, we don't though. like you to do that either. We want to be fair to everybody mm -hmm. um, involved. And, and I agree with everybody. You know, zero is a number. Um, the thing that that had me was that they wrote on there that we're going to deviate from what the RFP was sent out. That's what I'm questioning if that disqualifies them or not. Um, so 
that's why I'm going to stick with my, my motion to get something from legal. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long it takes, you know, if it delays it, it delays it. And I don't want to give you an answer on the spot because I haven't had time no. to research it. And I definitely want to get the entire package and all the responses and every, all the information that Clay has available so that I can do a thorough job. I'm, you know, to me, the bomb labs can bring litigation. If we rule a different way, then Pelican can bring litigation. So as far as I'm concerned, it's going to go to litigation and it's going to be delayed anyway. So I, before I make a vote on this, I'd rather hear your opinion, which is in line with what my motion is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amadi. You're, Mr. Michelle, you're done? Yes. Okay. Question from the chair to um, our attorney. If I'm not mistaken, you mentioned if this was a bid, it would be one way. But if it's, since it's an RFP, it doesn't hold the same, it's not the same criteria, correct? So I'm much more familiar with bid law than what I am with the RFP, so I need to go look up that RFP information. Okay. And that's all I have for you, Mr. Nakan. Um, if you have anything else for us. No, I'm good. Okay, all right. Um, I noticed that, uh, Mr. Bonvalin, you were kind of trying to get our attention there. As I stated earlier, We've been doing this job for quite some time, and we vested and really interested in continuing with this partnership. And what I want to say to you all tonight is that y'all have to understand, we put a zero because we know that's what we, we know we can get this job done without charging you any additional contract labor. And that's the whole reason behind it. It's not that we're trying to do anything to trip anybody up or change anything. And there was no change in the RFP. All right, we just wanted to make a footnote that we're going to cover whatever needed at the landfill in our price so that Clay would know that, or the parish would know that this is not anything. We're not trying to deviate or you know, change anything. It's just to know that the contract labor is going to be taken care of. We're going to take care of it. It's what we're saying, basically. And it's not like we're trying to change. If we were trying to change, we would not have responded. We, didn't put it, we wouldn't have put anything in there. We would have left it blank. We put zero because we want to charge you zero. It's just that simple. That's a hundred and thirty some odd thousand dollars a year that you would save. And I just really and truly think y'all really need to think about this. We've been doing this 20 some odd years. We've been in these parish our entire life, our entire families here. We do business with everybody in this parish is local. We do business with. We got opportunity. We got 15 people work for our company every day, gainfully employed. And we got to come up here and fight for a contract that I know we're the low bidder on is ridiculous. We should not have this discussion tonight like this. I'm utterly disappointed in each and every one of us that's standing here and having to argue about this. It's common sense. We're the low bidder. Give us the job. Let us continue doing what we do. That's what I ask. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bovalay. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Put your light on, John. Let's repeat that motion. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the motion is to hold this over until we get a legal opinion um, for our attorney as to whether it met all the qualifications. If Mr. Bonvalin's bid met all the qualifications. We have a motion on the floor. Yeah, he already got a second. We have a motion on the floor. It's as we've all heard from Mr. John Amade to hold this matter over until we get a legal opinion and a second by Mr. Danny Babin, members vote your machines.
votes nine to zero, we'll hold this motion. We'll hold this over until we get legal's um, legal opinion. Item number four, concurring with Paris, with the Paris administration to award the request for proposal received for the service contract for mowing and maintenance of boulevards and other locations of two greenscapes of Louisiana incorporated and authorizing the Paris president and or his designee to execute all contract documents associated herewith. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin, second by Ms. Kim Chauvin, seeing the lights members vote your machines. Votes 9 to 0, motion passes. Item number five, resolution authorizing the Paris president to enter into the appropriate subrogate agreement with GOSEP in order to receive $1.2 million in funding and implement the award FM, FMASRL elevation program to elevate seven severe repetitive loss structures. Moved by Mr. Carl Harding, second by Mr. Danny Babin. Seeing the lights, members, votes machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number six, authorizing the execution of change order number 13 for the construction agreement for Paris project number 97-PAV-21, state project number H-007351, country drive widening phase one, phase A, Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Steve Trostclair, second by Ms. Kim Chauvin. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number seven, consider the introduction of an ordinance to amend the 2024 adopted operating budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Item number one, animal shelter, $59,990. Item number two, transit, $17,458. Item number three, housing and human services, Head Start HVAC systems, $67,000. And calling a public hearing on said matter on April 24, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin, second by Mr. John Amady. Seeing the lights, members, votes, machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Steve, by Mr. Danny Babin, second by Mr. Carl Harding. Good evening. Members vote your machine. Votes nine to zero, we're adjourned. I'm sorry, Kim. Oh man, I took. Wait, this is. Oh, this is okay. Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council. They're not going to be... Do I wait? Okay. All right. Okay. So now I'm banging the gavel again. Lord Jesus. Notice to the public. If you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the, meet, the beginning of the meeting. 
All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices <clears throat> used for the communication used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. Mr. John Amade will lead in prayer and lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, Lord, and we ask for your wisdom and guidance by your Holy Spirit as we conduct the affairs of the parish, Lord. We also ask that your blessings and favor would be upon all the citizens of Terrebonne Parish, the good earth. And Lord, as we conduct ourselves, let us do it in a professional and efficient manner. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be calling the Community Development and Planning Committee to order this April 8, 2024. Ms. Charlie, can you please call the roll? Mr. Babin? Here. Ms. Chauvin? Here. Mr. Charles Claire? Here. Mr. Pledger? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Voisin? Here. Mr. Armady? Here. Mr. Champagne? Here. Mr. Hamner? Here. Madam Chairwoman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Okay. Item number one, calling a condemnation hearing on the commercial structure located at 309 Bayou du Lord Road owned by Estate Ira J. Bryan on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. It's okay. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to roll through them and we're going to have a, a, we're going to vote at the end of it. It's okay. Item number two, calling the condemnation hearing on the commercial structure located at 8647 Park Avenue, owned by C.S. Gadry, Incorporated on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number three, calling the condemnation hearing on the commercial structure located at 7459 Park Avenue, owned by Michael J. Duplantis, LLC, Ellen Duplantis Pontiff, Rose W.D. Properties, LLC, J. Rose Properties, LLC, Duplantis Real Estate Holdings, LLC, on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item 4, calling the condemnation hearing on the commercial structure located at 7108 Grand Cayo Road, owned by Oscar Enrique and Sharon Berg, Figueroa, Jr. on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Let me get this. <coughs> Item number six, five. Item number five. Calling the condemnation hearing on the commercial structure located at 6888 Grand Cayo Road, owned by Indian Ridge Oyster Farms, LLC, on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number six, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 50, 1526 Barringer Street, owned by Estate Clarence Ringgold, Jr., on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number seven, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 700 Morgan Street, owned by Annie Williams Redmond, on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number eight, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home and two accessory structures located at 101 Casman Street, owned by Raymond Joseph Odimon Jr. on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number nine, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 4868 Shrimpers Row, owned by Estate Cyril and Patricia Carlos LaBeouf on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number 10, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 309 South Central Boulevard owned by Brett E. Bynum on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number 11, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 208 Sterling Drive owned by Angela M. Tyler on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number 12, 
calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 6924 West Main Street, owned by Bayou Riggs, LLC, on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item 13, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 623 A. Hobson Street, owned by Renald C. Laprus on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item 14, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 623 C. Hobson Street, owned by Renald C. Laprus on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 15, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 1205 Miles Street, owned by Claudia Rita Bajron on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 16, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 210 Ackland Avenue, owned by Solomon and Lillian Miles Thomas, care of Brenda Dolores Thomas, on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 17, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential accessory structure located at 107 Lerett Street, owned by Joseph Richard and Leah Smith Owen Jr. on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 18, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 212 Knockhand Street, Apartment 9, owned by Ruth Jeff Sellison on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 19, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 212 Knockin Street, Apartment 8, owned by Ruth Jeff Salliston, on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 20, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 212 Knockin Street, Apartment 7, owned by Ruth Jeff Salliston, on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 21, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 212 Knockan Street, Apartment B, owned by Ruth Jeff Stellison on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 22, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 216 Knockan Street, owned by Ruth Jeff Stellison on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item number 23, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 311 Dover Drive, owned by Wilsha Pink Jones on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 24, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 103 Royal Street, owned by Thomas P. Ragus and Melinda D. Boudreaux on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 25, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 7311 Shrimpers Row, owned by Cleveland Francis on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 26, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 300 Prosperity Street, owned by Hugo Alberto Cazares Funtes on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 27, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 4277 Country Drive, owned by Corey A. Toops on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 28, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 246 Dana Lynn Street, owned by ProCom Construction Group, LLC, and Quentin Joseph Westbrook on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 29, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential and accessory structure located at 531 Roanoke Street, owned by William Martin Jeff, Charlene Jeff Washington, Gwen Jeff Banks, Janet Jeff Johnson, Michael G. Jeff, and Malika Jeff on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 30, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 7517 Main Street, owned by Annie Y. Hemel, care of Clarence Lewis on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 31, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 4746 North Bayou Black Drive, owned by Wil Wilmer J. and Rita Watson on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. 
Item 32, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 1447 Highway 55, owned by Louis Michael Lede on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. <laughs> Item number 33, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 2650 Anaheim Drive, owned by Terrence and Raquel Barber on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item 34, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential and accessory structure located at 4745 Bayou Black Drive, owned by Marvin A. Antel, Johnny W. Antel, Claudette Antel Bro, Myra Antel Bro, Rafe A. Antel, and Jamie Antel Quibido on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item number 35, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 113 Ray Ellender Court, owned by Garrett Sheet, care of Samuel Henry, on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. <clears throat> Item 36, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential mobile home located at 4112 South Down Mandalay Road, owned by Estate John Matthews Sr., Eugene Bazile Jr., Leon Grow Jr., Bessie Grow. Augustine Dappermont Lacour, Lawrence Dappermont, August Columbus Dappermont Jr., Serps Testamentary Trust, Tellus for Matthews, Wesley S. Hall Jr., Maxine L. Hall on April 23, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Item 37, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 1605 Dunn Street, owned by Adrian Mathern, on April 23, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. Item 38, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 1603 Dunn Street, owned by Adrian Mathern, on April 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Item 39, calling a condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 106 Ackland Avenue, owned by Ella Toussaint Bird, Johnny Lyons Jr., Freddie Lyons, Ronald Toussaint, Isaiah Toussaint, Washington Lyons, Brian Toussaint, Nevada Ray Toussaint, Thelma Toussaint, Gaynell Toussaint, Etta Farrar High, Warnell Lyons, Leonard Lyons, Carolyn Lyons Porsche, William Lyons Jr., Linda Lyons Jones, Shane Lyons, Rory Lyons, Vernell Lyons, Lionel Lyons Jr., and Rudy Lyons on April 23rd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. I'm just saying, with this one, I deserve a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, one more. <laughs> Item 40, calling the condemnation hearing on the residential structure located at 6443 Highway 56, owned by Perry Joseph Ducati, Carol Boudreau Ducati, Gary Joseph Ducati, and Maria Villa Viceno Ducati, and on April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. I am sure I butchered Move. some names. <laughs> Moved by uh, Mr. Pledger and seconded by Mr. Hamner. Members vote your machine. Okay, hold up. Start. Oh, no, 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 no. What is it? You got to vote. Oh. Members vote your machines. I see. Okay. Corlila. Okay. Oh, we have seven yeas. And motion to adjourn. Motion, um, motion to adjourn by Mr. Pledger and second by Mr. Chosclair. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Need water. You up, Daddy? You can't even raise the I'm sure. I raised myself all the way up yeah. from this chair to the next one. I'm sorry. That's my fault. That's right. Yep. I don't know. You have an extra one. Y'all ready? All right. Um, notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole 
addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'll now call the meeting to order with the invocation and pledge to be led by Mr. Um, Champagne. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we make decisions that might affect the residents of Terrebonne Parish. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call roll. Mr. Trostclair, yes. Mr. Pledger, yes. Mr. Harding, Mr. Vazen, yes. Mr. Armady, yes. Mr. Champagne, yes. Mr. Hamner, yes. Mr. Babin, yes. Mr. Chauvin. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Item one, discussion and possible action regarding invocation and Pledge of Allegiance at, at each committee meeting. Did, okay, we got Kim. All right. Got it. Okay. Um, the reason why I brought this up is because during, we're meeting on the same day, so I'm just kind of wondering... Um, and, and believe me, I'm not against prayer and the pledge because I pray over these things all the time. I pray every day. But I'm just kind of wondering why we keep doing the same thing and we're in the same meeting. And I get that each one is a different meeting. But when I looked up Robert's Rules of Order, it doesn't necessarily state that you have to do it this way. Um, so I'm just kind of bringing it up for discussion. If we're meeting on the I, – I understood that the reason why it was done this way was because committee meetings were met. Uh, on different nights, but we're meeting on the same night, uh, which is Monday nights, to do the committee. And um, just kind of wondering, you know, if this could be done differently um, and just thoughts of others. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, Kim, just to give you some of my my feelings on it, each one of them, and, and to the people that are listening, each one of these meetings that we're doing, we're on policy procedure right now. We did budget uh, and finance. Uh, I don't have one tonight, but it's, it's public service. Each one is an individual meeting. I don't ever remember, and, and maybe they did have meetings on meetings on committee meetings, rather, on different nights, Okay. Uh, in my opinion, it, it, it uh, is something that we need. I mean, we all love our God and we all love our country. And the more we do it and, and the more people hear it, maybe we can just help this country out a little bit. I think we have a lot more important problems in the parish to deal with than this particular issue. And I don't mean that in any derogatory way. I'm just saying that I don't want to say this is the way we always did it and we ought to continue it. I'm saying I think it's personally, I think it's necessary before each one. So we as a group can reflect on what we're getting ready to discuss to to try to help move this parish forward. So that's just my opinions on it. And I guess for me, I mean, um, I pray every day. So, you know, praying four times or three times over over this stuff. I mean, I'm well prayed up before I even get here. So I, I get what you're saying. I was just told that this is the way it's always been done. And so I, I'm just, it's it's a question. It's just a question of, or do we remain the same? Do we change up things? Do we move through this? Um, I like to hear other people's opinions too. Thank you. Mr. Trostclair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Jeff. Yeah, Kim, I agree with you. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the committee meetings run consecutive back to back to back. There's really no time frame in between. If you look at our agenda schedules, one starts at 5.30, one starts at 5.35, one starts at 5.40, and they did five-minute increments. So to me, it's, it's uh, 
you know, and, and, and as Mr. Babin said, definitely we need as much prayer and, and, and allegiance to our country as we can get. But just standing up here and going through the motions really is, is uh, it, it, it's kind of redundant in my opinion. So uh, I, I agree with you, Kim, and I, I think uh, maybe we should look at changing it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. okay. Item two, discussion of possible action regarding fireworks in Terrebonne Parish. Um, Mr. Is that you, Mr. Voisin? Go. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just put this on the uh, agenda uh, to have a discussion uh, with uh, administration and legal present uh, to be able to maybe y'all can shed a little light. I got a couple of constituents that, uh, you know, they have some legitimate concerns when it comes to fireworks, particularly in subdivisions and things of that nature. And maybe a uh, with, with some of you veterans, y'all could maybe shed a little light on changing an ordinance for a small portion of the parish and how that would look and how that would work if that was even possible. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Item, oh, Mr. Mr. Amity. I think he was asking legal a question. So I'll ask the question. If a constituent wants their subdivision exempt, like we did downtown city limits of Homa, how would that be done? Did my button work? Oh, there it goes. Sorry, uh, Councilman Voisin. I understood you were asking the rest of the council for their opinions. Um, I think... Um, in my mind, if a subdivision, a certain subdivision wanted to exclude fireworks in their subdivision, but they were otherwise allowed by ordinance, um, it seems that um, restricted covenants may be the best way for them to go. And there's a way for them to get enough signatures to put in restrictive covenants in their own subdivision and uh, govern themselves. So that may be an option for them that the parish wouldn't have to regulate. Um, I'd have to check into seeing if there was an issue with kind of, I know it's not the right way to use the word, but maybe gerrymandering around subdivisions for the purposes of fireworks. Um, I'd hate to see you have to start doing all that. But subdivision restrictive covenants, I think, would probably be the best way to go if, if there's a consensus in the subdivision that they can get that done privately. But I, I can most certainly look into uh, amending the ordinance for you um, and see if we can uh, exclude some of the subdivisions who were interested. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Trosclair. Yes, thank you, Ms. Jeff. Uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding of restricted covenants is that that cover just pretty much, you know, normal restrictions and you know, like that the only, you know, the only uh, regulatory agency is the actual subdivision itself. So anyone has the neighbors, any yes. issues, issues uh, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't create a law that stops it. So what would be the binding? The, the remedy in a restrictive covenant would be um, an injunction, an action in court. By one neighbor against another, right? So someone would wouldn't have be to enforceable have to hire a lawyer by on their own and 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 follow follow the injunction. Mm -hmm. By that time, the fireworks are over with, and we're almost doing the next one. <laughs> so thank you. All right, um, Mr. Champon. I guess I was uh, it's along the similar lines. So that's really only if the if the neighborhood has a homeowners association, right? Well, if it has a homeowners association, the association would be authorized to bring an injunction against any neighbor who would um, who would violate the restrictive covenants. Um, but if there is no homeowners association, usually it's a neighbor that's authorized. 
anybody who lives within the subdivision would be authorized to bring it. And like Mr. Trosclair pointed out, it's a little too, uh, it's a little too little too late if you're looking at fireworks. Um, but if there's a particular subdivision that anybody on the council would like me to check into, send me a message. And not every, I guess, street has a clear defined neighborhood. That's correct. Name, so. That's correct. Not every street is in an actual subdivision. Mm-hmm. All right. Mr. Boisin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, petition sounds right to me. Uh, and uh, I'll pass that on to the constituents. Thank you. If you have any. Oh. She's got to turn it on. Go ahead. Councilman Boisin, just call me if you have any particulars that you want to discuss. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Babin. Yeah, just, uh, Mr. Voise, just to, to maybe bring this out, and I think Ms. Neal will probably bring it out as well, F for speed bumps and stuff that we have in the subdivision. We have a process that the subdivision can go through. I mean, if someone calls and wants a speed bump, we, we're not going to do it just for that one individual, okay? If somebody calls for fireworks, to just use it as an example, we're not going to change it just for one person. But if, if there is a process, and if that process is a petition of so many people, or some, a certain percentage in the neighborhood, that might be something that Ms. Neal can, can look at. If we can isolate one particular subdivision, and then what the requirements would be for that one particular subdivision to be opted out of the way we have the ordinance written right now. I, I mean, I think that's, I'm, I'm not trying to put words in her mouth, but I, I mean, that might be a step that we could take, and I'm sure she's going to look into that. So, thank you. You know, seeing no further lights, we'll go on to item three. Approve the co-sponsorship request by Terrebonne Children's Advocacy Center for the Crime Victims Rights Week rally to be held April 22nd, 2024, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Courthouse Square. Moved by Mr. Champon, seconded by Mr. Babin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Um, we got seven yeas and three absent. M motion passes. Oh, okay, seven and two is nine. <laughs> <laughs> Item number four, approve the co-sponsorship request for the Terrebonne NAACP Youth Council for the Juneteenth celebration to be held June 15th, 2024 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Dumas Auditorium. Moved by Mr. Pledger, seconded by Mr. Was it Trosclair. Um, seeing no lights, members vote your machine. We have eight yeas and one absent. All right. Uh, number five, motion to close the condemnation proceedings file on the residential structure located at 127 Saxony Drive, Homer, Louisiana, owned by June Fisher. Moved, moved by Mr. Who was it? Trost Claire, seconded by Mr. Um, Pledger, um, Mr. Champagne, you have the floor. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I was the one who asked to put this on. It's in my district. Um, this property was going, uh, an investor was trying to buy the property and it was on the condemnation list and the lender would not move forward, allowing them to purchase the property until we pulled it off. And so they provided a letter saying that it was going through sale. So that's why I asked it to be come off. That's all I wanted to say about it. Uh, Seeing no further lights, members vote your machine. Uh, motion passes. Item six, amend the condemnation order adopted on October 24, 2023 on a residential mobile home located at 1192 Highway 55, owned by Jason P. Odima by changing the deadline to complete demolition, demolition and our removal from the November 30, 2023 to October 
first, 2024. Moved by Mr. Charles Clare, seconded by Mr. Uh, Champagne. Um, seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Motion passes. Uh, item number seven, resolution authorizing parish administration to accept an assignment between ACSW Architects, LLC, and AQ Studios, LLC, for a project repair or replace various damaged buildings and structures at Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government South Campus Facility. Moved by Mr. Babin. Second by Mr. Pledger. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Motion passes. Item number eight, consider the introduction of an ordinance authorizing the parish president to enter a cooperative endeavor agreement with the Terrebonne Ministerial Alliances Incorporated and execute necessary documents for the transfer of immovable property from Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government and Terrebonne Ministerial Alliance Incorporated and to provide for related matters and call a public hearing on Wednesday, April 24, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Well, Moved by Mr. Babb and seconded by Mr. Pledger. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Motion passes. Item number nine, consider the adoption of an ordinance amended to the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinance to provide for usage of the official seal by Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government elected officials and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, April 24, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Ms. Chauvin, seconded by Mr. Voisin. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Motion passes. Uh, motion to adjourn by Mr. Trost Clare, seconded by Ms. Chauvin. Uh, good night, everybody. Motion.